Good morning everyone. Welcome back to Tandatula Sofa Safari. My name is Foreman and I'll be kicking off this season two. Sit back, relax, and let's get out there and see what we can find for you. This tree here is a knobthorn tree or acacia negrescens. Um, you know, there's a quite a bit of a damage there, but I would like to share a couple of things with you. Um, the damage here is basically from elephants. So the tree has been, you know, the, the box has been removed by an elephant and now the tree is just dying. But let's not go too much into that one there. Um, what I'd like to share with you is the uses of the tree in um, our culture. I remember in those days, um, my sisters used to run into the bush, especially when it's like Christmas time, um, looking for this tree's bark. And the bark actually is used to curl your hair or stretch it. So what they do is they take the bark and they burn it into the ash and they collect the ash and they start cooking the ash and you apply the ash as it's still like hot. Okay, as hot as possible. If you can handle it, you just do it. And um, after that, you go and wash your hair and it's all turned up to Kelly and stretched. So that's what they did in those days. Thank you. Well, surprisingly, we just got off there talking about the trees and stuff and a few meters ahead of us, there's the lines on our right hand side. This is uh, very interesting. All four river pride females are all here together. It seems to me as if they are actually, or they were hunting since last night. They left their cubs somewhere and today they are here and the cubs must be somewhere close by our camp area. That's where we last saw them um, last night. So on the road here as I was driving up here, you could see there were um, zebra tracks crossing the road so I'm sure these females were pretty much after those um, zebras if not that we maybe disturb them <laughs> oh, this is getting up going back again she's going to join the the other two at the back there These, these females, I mean, they're all four together and um, I see the way they were lying here, two were sitting there and the other two back there. Um, so what would happen then if if they happen to uh, come across anything, you know, doesn't matter if it's a zebra or impala or whatever, what these guys may do is um, one may walk around to the other side and then maybe the next one to go on the other side and maybe one or two in the middle. And as they do that, what they're trying to do is to try and, um, well, the one in the middle is just keeping an eye, making sure that you can still see the targets. And the others will walk around and they will hopefully maybe select their target and they may start chasing it back towards the guy in the middle. And that's when they then corner it and catch it. Hopefully they are lucky. So yeah, that's, that's what they will generally do. The mornings like that, like now, it's still still fine, you know, it's not really that bad, it's still nice and cool, a little bit cloudy, so in this case they can still continue to hunt. Um, you know, they wouldn't mind following the zebras, as I noticed the tracks are gone straight to the east across the road here, so I'm pretty much sure that these guys will also go towards that direction. So my thinking now is that, I mean, straight away, as, the, as soon as that hyena called, she got up and now she's walking back that way. My thinking is that they possibly left their cubs within that direction where this hyena is calling right now. And that's why maybe she's a little bit concerned now she's going to try and go back towards that direction.
So here they are again, um, still mobile directly to the west towards the direction of where the hyena was calling. So we will stick with them a little bit and see where they are taking us to. They may be taking us back to where the cubs are. Who knows how far they are, they may not be that far. So we will try and stick with them. Those are your, um, the birds at the background, they're flying away now. Those are your um, red-billed wood hoopoes, or the green wood hoopoes. We're just making that noise. Um, it could be that you know, they've seen the lions also going to that direction. Usually they are very noisy anyway, but uh, what they did just now by flying from that tree to here, closer to where the lions were, it may be a sign of them actually seeing the lions and that's why they are making that sound. I I don't know exactly what it is but uh, I mean, they are quite interested. They, they keep looking um, into that direction very seriously. So, yet we haven't seen anything, but I'm um, pretty much sure that there's something that they are trying to um, stalk or hunt. Let's see what they do. Check out that one is now kind of like stalking and this one over here you can see already she's trying to go more to the left. I'm not sure about the fourth one. I didn't see exactly where she went but she could be somewhere maybe a little bit further ahead. There they go. In this case, we don't want to disturb them. Um, so we're going to let them go, let them do whatever they're doing there, and then we will follow afterward. There's definitely something that uh, she's stalking there. You can see now she's stalking straight into that bush there. And the others have probably gone to the to the left hand side. So let's let's just sit and wait. Since we are not aware of what they are actually hunting now, I don't want to also drive into that bush because it's quite thick in there, so you don't know what's going to come out of the bush back towards us. So let's rather just wait here and let them um, deal with it, and then we're going to go there. Okay, 
in this case I don't think they they caught anything but let's give it a try and let's see what they are up to after this so the coolies are gone I saw one impala riding this way yet we yeah can't hear anything happening anymore so they may still be just relaxing there or walking let's go there and see what uh, what happened So they've, they've now missed their kill, so everything is gone and now she's just sniffing around there, getting some uh, blending. Yeah, now you can see um, how they're walking right now. You can see that the walking is now changed compared to when they first came from that direction to here. They were kind of like, you know, nice and easy and slow and listening. And now you see they just walk. So here they are, we found them again, after losing them for a few minutes. Just now I heard um, some sound. I don't know exactly, can't figure out exactly what it was, but something in this block here. And I think if you look at that female, she's walking, but she's also checking somewhere there. There must be something happening there. And the others are still in the block. I don't know if they're moving, but that female, you must watch, she's looking, checking that side, you see. Okay, I think uh, once again we're just gonna sit tight, um, yeah, for the second time. So let's see what what's gonna happen. They are definitely going to try again. Um, as I said, that there were some impalas calling in the block here, so she's here, but uh, the others are already, or the one female is already gone into the block here. So she's just hanging back here, um, in case they flush something back towards her, and she will maybe give it a try. So we'll sit tight a little bit and let's just listen. Just park here for now. It's not, uh, yeah, let's not disturb them. Um, you know, even though those impalas have seen the other lionesses, but there's still one lioness here, and there is definitely one impala there. So that impala is now pretty much in between. So let's see what happens. Yeah, she's still, she's still quite keen. She's still sitting here facing that way, so she's still watching. But I think the other two down there have already given up. Um, I just heard the very low um, call, mm. you know, do you hear that? Yeah, so I think they are already giving up. She was still hoping that maybe that one Impala will probably run back towards her, but uh, I doubt <laughs> he's already going somewhere else. So yeah, let's see what's going to happen from here. I think they are now kind of like giving up. Oh, they got cubs. The cubs are here. <laughs> so I think we're going to go and take a look at the cubs. They've now found the cubs. Um, so this was pretty much close to where the cubs are. And this is why they came straight to this direction. Um, there's one female coming out there. I can still hear one impala snorting on the other side, but I don't think they're gonna go hunting now. Let's uh, go down there and have a look at the cubs.
<laughs> Almost doesn't want to lactate. And they're like, Mom, come sit down, we want to drink. All right, now the hunting game is over. So now it's time for for the cubs to to drink. And I think from here they're probably going to look for maybe a maybe better spot, uh, maybe down in the riverbed there where it's nice and shady. That's where they're going to go. It seems like these two things they've got their cubs you know they're kind of like been disturbed <laughs> from from hunting now the other two are still kind of like keen to to give it a try see they're now walking back into the direction where the impalas are gone into so i'm not sure if they are still really hunting but that's where they're going to now but these guys now with their cubs i don't think they're going to do that much
Well, what a beautiful sighting of these guys, eh? All nice and playful. Pearl spotted owlet at the background. <coughs> so in that direction where the other two lionesses are gone into, you can see this one she was also just facing towards that direction. There are quite a few Ox pickers are uh, bird call, yeah. um, meaning that there could be something. I mean, it can be anything yeah. like impalas, giraffes, rhino, buffalo. Obviously, we've seen some impalas around here, so there's definitely something there, some animal. So, those two females, I'm pretty much sure that they are going into that direction, so they are still trying to hunt. Oh, young male, he's so curious. He's checking us. I'm standing by. I'm um, just standing by there. Wow, now they're all getting up. Slowly moving to the north, uh, back into the bush. I'm sure they're going to try and find a nice spot for them to relax for the day. Can hear the female, the mother calling. Okay, um, here we are now. We've got uh, Mr. Giraffe standing right here, um, and some impalas down there. Um, earlier on, we came through the block here, following those lines. Obviously, we we did see the uh, giraffe tracks, but um, yeah, we did not see him. So I don't know how the lines actually missed this hole big anymore. Uh, he must have been just hiding in the block here. Okay, that is a it's a young bull giraffe. Um, you can tell by just looking at his horns, uh, they are thick and bold on top. Um, other than that, really, you can see his little button between his legs. So that's the easiest way also to tell. Um, there he goes, moving right behind the bush there. Gonna come out on the other side. Um, check when he walks. They have a great way uh, of walking. You know, I love how they move uh, both legs on the side at almost the same time compared to any of the other animals, which will pretty much alternate their legs. Um, these ones are more like diagonal uh, walkers. It's very interesting. Um, they keep their balance through the neck. You know, as they move, you must you will see the neck leaning the other way. Then he leans the other way as he moves to the other side. Okay, they can, you know, they can sprint pretty fast, um, you know, away from lions if they have to. Obviously, 
through a thick bush like this it's not that easy for a giraffe to accelerate at its high speed but yeah they can actually move pretty fast um in terms of uh defending itself it will use its hind legs front legs uh to kick so that's that's what they do and i mean yeah one kick could be um a nasty one to a lion <laughs> could damage the lion's jaws or something or break uh, the rib or something so they're pretty strong animals okay okay cool that is now a a gray hondo i mean you get quite a few different species of hondos um the one with the yellow beak um the one with the red bill and this guy we have uh, listened to him calling just now and you must watch him flipping his wings. I love how he flaps his wings like that. <laughs> so it's interesting to watch him doing that. Um, very interesting, um, you know, when I grew up with my brothers and that. Um, my father used to tell me that this bird will always follow the wind. You know, when the wind is blowing, it will just follow the wind. Okay. And that is possibly because obviously flying the other way into the wind may not be a good idea. It's tough for him to, or for it to do that. So it would rather follow the direction of where the wind is going. But at the same time, it would be making this sound. Or just one um, whistle. Like. Okay. In our language, we call it Manteveni. And the reason why it's called Manteveni is just because of that one sound that it makes sometimes. Okay. And um, we normally name birds by its call. So if you listen to most of our uh, bird names in Shangan, they are pretty much related to how the bird is actually calling. So that's how that's how it is. So Mandevin. Um my brother used to tell me, don't don't listen, don't imitate the bird because you're gonna get lost. And that was because the bird didn't know what to do when it's windy. It will just go with the wind. <laughs> so they would also say, You're gonna get lost, don't mimic that bird. Okay, so it's just one of those things about this bird in my culture. Okay, we are here again um, right over here this is the uh, tree called the russet bush willow or a combritum heroines okay um, just a couple of things about this tree it's a very interesting tree uh, obviously it's a very good firewood you can collect the wood from this tree and burn it it's a very nice one uh, not as strong as your um, red bush willows though but also uh, very good um, it's a very good tree also to use as a building material. So people in the old days, you know, they used to build houses from anything that they can find. Okay, whether it's a, it's a can or a bottle or a, or a stone, you know, buffalo dung, cow's dung, whatever. They would put things together to build um, a house. And this tree was one of the trees of which you can get um, good poles and also it was just one of those trees which is nice and easy to to weave it it doesn't break very easily i mean if you look at the branch over here so if I was to break this one you bend it like that it doesn't just break okay it's very um flexible and what they would do then they would weave this okay so you put poles and you weave this in between the poles and then um the holes in between would be filled up with you know cans rocks whatever you get you just put it in there and at the end of the day you get like mud from your tomite mound and put it outside and inside and on the floor you would use depending on where you are cow's dung uh buffalo's dung um, to make the floor look nice so that's what you would use 
So this is a tree that they would actually prefer more than anything else. The other thing that I know about this tree is that, um, you know, some of the old guys would love to make their walking stick, but it takes time. So it's not just coming here, breaking the tree and make a walking stick. You would have to come and monitor one branch. For example, this one. You bend it, okay, and you leave it. And you, leave, you let it grow. And then you come again and bend it until it gives you that perfect shape of a walking stick handle. And then they cut it. And that's how you would make your walking stick. It's a, it's a walking stick for life. You don't want to break that one because if you do break it, then yeah, you'll, you'll be punished for real. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. We had a great morning watching those lions. We hope you will join us again. Thank you.